at least tell me whenever you're ready so that we can start. It's ready. OK, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. This is the, the fifth uh, webinar in the Disability Inclusion Training Series, and we will be discussing and covering hosting accessible online um, e events or meetings using the uh, um, MS Teams meeting and the Zoom, Zoom Text Cloud meetings. Um, this is part of the high impact uh, webinars that are organized by the UN Business Operations Strategy Team, and we are very happy that you have uh, joined us today. We have also our colleagues from Namibia who will be sharing with us their experiences uh, in the field of hosting online meetings. Please uh, kindly note that this meeting is being recorded and, um, uh, and transcribed. There are automatic live captions as well, and we will be sharing the um, recording of the meeting uh, as soon as they become available with the presentation. Um, uh, please note that this is an interactive uh, training session and we kindly ask you to uh, per, uh, interact as much as you can either by leaving your comments in the chat or by raising your virtual hand and uh, feeling feel free to unmute yourselves and interact with us because this is a learner-centric learning journey as we're learning together um, in this journey. So uh, please let me give you an, a little introduction about myself. My name is Heba Khalif. I'm based in Alexandria, Egypt. I have a visual impairment myself and I'm a screen reader user. I have a master's degree from the University of Birmingham in inclusive education. Um, I worked in a number of international and national international organizations, uh, helping them to uh, build up their assistive technology uh, uh, training labs and services. I have 20 years experience in the field of disability inclusion, web accessibility and digital accessibility. I worked with the Biblioteca Alexandrina in Egypt, the German International Development Agency or the GIZ, and also worked with the FAO uh, HQ and FAO r &E to assess the uh, to assess uh, assess their digital tools and services. So, in 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 a couple of words, please could you um, could you tell us what is your learning out expected learning outcomes from this workshop? Uh, what are you expect to take away from this uh, training session about hosting online meetings? Any kind of challenges or uh, or questions that you might have, so that we can modify our agenda uh, as much as we can in order to cover your learning uh, expected learning outcomes. So please feel free to type in the chat or uh, or unmute yourselves, raise your hands and share with us your expected outcomes, learning outcomes. So this is Diego, Eva, and there's one comment from Josephine saying best practices for accessible online meetings and quick wins though, that could easily implement and promote in our agencies. Sure. So should we should we move on? Yeah, there isn't any other comment. If there is, I'll let you know. OK, Oh, well, there's one. So I'm just saying, yeah. Saying I look okay. forward to learning the ways to make online meetings accessible to all audiences. Sure. There's um, a couple of thumbs up yeah. on each. <laughs> Good. So uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, we will start the agenda with the introduction about uh, disability in general and disability inclusion. And then we will go uh, on to discuss hosting accessible online meetings. Um, we will discuss the challenges and the opportunities or the or the quick wins that we can use for in, in the online platforms like MS meetings and Zoom cloud meetings uh, in order to make our online meetings as accessible as possible. Uh, we will explore the accessibility features in both uh, platforms, Zoom and uh, MS meetings. And we will uh, conclude with uh, the experience. Uh, uh, we will have, of course, interactive exercises exploring these uh, accessibility features. And then we will conclude with the experience from uh, our colleagues in Namibia about hosting um, online meetings. Uh, we will have a time for your questions and answers uh, uh, at the end of, of the presentations if you have any questions. 
so uh, the high impact common services, let me give you just a brief overview about the high impact common services. We have 10 to 15 uh, high impact services and they evolve around a number of, uh, of core areas. The first area is cost uh, efficiency, and we do the, this uh, um, through cost avoidance and the increase of the quality and the service delivery. Uh, so we, uh, we try to apply the um, the most uh, cost avoidance approaches available um, without compromising the quality of um, uh, of service. Uh, on the contrary, we're aiming to improve the service, the quality of service um, through uh, increasing service delivery in speed, quality and volume. Um, the second core area that we are uh, focusing on is good practices, and uh, we are seeking to achieve that through leveraging on the entity expertise uh, and scaling up and sharing resources among the different agencies in different countries. Uh, the third area is the disability inclusion, and within this area we have three core uh, main core areas, which are uh, inclusive HR, uh, ICT, and um, physical accessibility, and also uh, gender, uh, sorry, and um, inclusive ICT. Uh, the fourth area is gender inclusion, and within this area we have two, uh, three main topics, which are uh, gender parity, uh, responsive procurement, and PSEA. And in the environmental sustainability, we focus on two two main core areas, which are renewable energy and uh, decarbonization. So now moving on to the uh, introduction about disability, as you all know, there are uh, one. Sorry, yes. Sorry, there was just one one last comment saying um, regarding the learning outcomes, um, that it is their hope to learn good examples from other country offices and bring it into country, their country context. Sure, thank you very much. And we will be discussing this uh, when uh, uh, with our uh, colleagues from Namibia. Um, so here in disability inclusion, uh, we're, um, as you all know, there are 1 billion uh, persons with disabilities worldwide, 80 to 90% of which are of working age. And unfortunately, they face unemployability due to the existing uh, barriers in the environment. And by the word environment, we mean the physical and the digital environment. And uh, throughout this uh, training today, we are going to talk about um, the digital environment of online meetings. How can we turn that environment into an accessible alternative as much as we can? So uh, as you can see in this slide, there is a definition about accessibility and this uh, and it evolves around the quality of being usable, mm -hmm. reachable, obtainable and uh, uh, interactive uh, for any environment to be uh, in, to be used by any person, regardless of their uh, of their abilities or needs. And by that, we also mean both the, phys phys uh, the uh, physical and the digital um, environments. Uh, here you can see the text of the Article 2 uh, on, in, on the CRPD that discusses um, uh, the uh, topic of uh, accessible communication. And um, as you can see, uh, it defines uh, more than one mode of communication other than written and spoken language. It mentions a sign language, the use of sign language, the use of augmentative and alternative communications. Um, uh, and the use of different uh, the use of different formats. Uh, so these are all modes of communications that we are seeking to use in order to address the communicational needs of uh, persons with different abilities. So with the emergence of the COVID-19 crisis, um, uh, with 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 this crisis uh, that witnessed the bloom of use the use of the online technology technologies and the online meeting platforms uh, with everyone uh, working from home and um, uh, trying to uh, study or work or um, man manage their daily life. Uh, there comes the need to have an online platform that could accommodate for all these needs. Uh, that's why uh, the blooming of the online technologies like MS meetings and um, uh, Zoom text cloud meetings are witnessed. So we will be starting by discussing the accessibility 
in Microsoft Teams meetings. Uh, Microsoft Teams meeting is a messaging and collaboration online platform that is used by organizations and individuals to share a virtual workspace uh, where they can collaborate and meet uh, virtually um, and work uh, and share files and folders. Um, unfortunately, with the with this technology, as any other a new technology, um, and inaccessibility uh, barriers emerge, and uh, the creators or the developments of uh, or developers of these technologies are constantly trying to address uh, these barriers, as we will see uh, in the next slide. So we are going to divide the role of the persons who are participating on the MS team meetings to three roles, organizers, uh, presenters and attendees. And here in this slide, as you can see, we are going to discuss the role of the organizers, how to make our, their meetings as accessible as possible. Of course, uh, first thing is that they have to turn on their uh, recording and transcription services and inform all the participants in the meetings that they are being recorded and transcribed. Uh, turning live captions is also very, very important for users with deaf, uh, who are deaf and hard of hearing, as well as uh, um, turning card captions, which we will discuss uh, later, the difference between live captions and card captions. Um, Muting notification is very, very important as well. If they are, uh, if there are users with um, uh, screen readers, uh, it's uh, very helpful to mute the notifications so that um, the screen reader wouldn't always announce that um, a person, persons are leaving or, or joining the meeting, and this would distract, of course, uh, the attendees who are who are screen reader users. Uh, the together mode on is uh, very important as well because uh, this enables the meeting meeting organizer to choose one background uh, for all one virtual background for all the participants uh, to have and uh, of course they can customize this background to be as accessible as possible using um, uh, using a high color contrast uh, uh, a, you know uh, like light background with dark text or vice versa. Uh, or also uh, minimize any visual clutter that might be existing due to um, having many backgrounds from many participants. Uh, but this together mode, the organizer can choose any background like the auditorium, an auditorium for instance, or any kind of virtual scene that uh, they like to have um, as a background of their meeting. The pinning and spot uh, spotlighting is another option uh, that, uh, that the uh, uh, organizers of the meeting can use um, and this is very helpful when we ha are having sign language interpreters. Uh, we can share uh, in the sharing option options. We can choose to share two screens beside each other and in the second screen we can just click on the inter uh, sign language interpreters name and um, we can just spotlight this person for all participants so that this person's uh, person video is uh, constantly constantly seen. Uh, this is the court captions that I was speaking to you earlier about. Um, this is different from the live caption captions in that the live caption depend on the AI uh, to produce an automated uh, live captions to um, uh, to to the the the, the, the meeting. However, this uh, live caption is not always accurate. So uh, through these card captions, a URL can be given to the live professional live captioner and using API uh, services from Microsoft IP, I, I, API client, um, uh, the, the, the person can go to this URL or put this URL in the software, in the API software, and the professional live captions uh, are going to appear at the bottom of the video just as the uh, automatic live caption in place of the automatic live captions. Uh, it's very helpful to announce uh, the accessibility options that are available, like for instance that this, there will be sign language interpreters available or live captions will be available and also with the housekeeping part uh, at the start of the meeting. And uh, we, the, the organizers have to set and identify a certain mechanism for uh, attendees and participants to share and uh, uh, to share their comments or answer their questions. 
or uh, um, or inquiries uh, by setting a system for them to like uh, raise their virtual hand or write their comments in the chat. Um, unfortunately, the Q&A box um, is, is not very accessible uh, with the some screen readers. So uh, the chat box is generally a, uh, is the advised medium to be used for sharing the comments and the questions. Um, this is for the presenters. It's very helpful if the presenter would uh, would uh, describe any visual content verbally, so that users with uh, a visual impairment can uh, do not miss out on any information. And uh, it's very helpful for them to slow down their pace, so so that if there are uh, professional captioners uh, captioning the meeting or sign language interpreters, they would have time to uh, translate or uh, uh, write the text uh, in the captioning box. Um, uh, it will be very helpful for the presenter to read out aloud any. Uh, chat messages or comments uh, 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 that are sent from uh, the meeting attendees, because uh, if there are persons with uh, who are screen reader users, it is very uh, distorting for them uh, to, you know, to uh, to to they, they normally would um, set the notification, uh, uh, the screen reader to mute the team's notification so that they would be able to hear the presenter and not hearing the both the presenter and the screen reader at the same time, uh, because this might be very distracting for them. So it's very helpful for the presenters uh, to read aloud any mes incoming messages. Um, the presenter can, of course, describe uh, themselves if that's possible or their surroundings. Um, uh, and it depends on the personal preference of the presenters. And as for the attendees, um, they have a couple of steps to take. Uh, first, to hide uh, to, to hide their video, especially if they have uh, if they are uh, deaf or hard of hearing so that they can concentrate on the video of the uh, of the sign language interpreter and the presenter and also if they have a uh, low bandwidth uh, low internet bandwidth it, it's also helpful to hide their own videos and they can use the pinning participants feature uh, to pin anyone's video uh, from uh, from the meeting participants and uh, the difference between the pinning and the spotlighting is that when you pin a video you pin it for yourself but when you spotlight a video, uh, you spotlight it for everyone. Um, it is very helpful also for screen reader users, especially to mute the notifications on the MS meet Teams meeting, so that, as I said, they would only hear the presenter and wouldn't be distracted by the uh, sound of the screen reader announcing any incoming notifications. Uh, turning off incoming video is another option for screen reader users since they are not going to uh, if they if they if they are uh, totally blind and they have no vision uh, or no usable vision they wouldn't be uh, really in, um, you know the uh, the the video wouldn't be really beneficial for them so it would be good if they could turn off the incoming video this will save the bandwidth and make them uh, attend the meeting and concentrate on listening just listen to the presenter. Uh, blurring background is also uh, very good for persons who um, who have uh, low vision, uh, 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 or uh, so that they wouldn't, uh, uh, and also for anyone who is uh, also presenting, uh, because uh, the, the the visual clutter and uh, the more background uh, that it will be present in the meeting, uh, the more it will be difficult for persons who are deaf and hard of hearing to uh, see. Uh, the sign language interpreter clearly. Um, if they are uh, commenting or answering a question or sharing a comment, it will it is very helpful to say uh, see, uh, say their names first, and then whenever they finish commenting, uh, they will say over to and announce the name of the of the presenter. So the persons who are captioning. Would uh, would uh, be able to write the person's names and also the live the automated live captioning will catch the person's names names as well. So we are going to have this exercise. Uh, this is a video that I'm going to uh, 
to turn on using uh, this video on YouTube. I'm going to turn on this video, but I'm going first to apply the screen shade on and uh, share my computer sound. So you would be only uh, uh, hearing the video without seeing it. And uh, you can then uh, comment on this experience um, uh, and describe, uh, describe the experience for us. So uh, just give me a few minutes to apply the screen shade. So now I have um, applied a screen curtain, which is an option existing on the screen reader that would enable uh, visually impaired users or, user, or users with visual impairment to, to put a screen curtain on their screen so the screen would be black. I will then uh, uh, stop sharing and start sharing again with uh, including computer sound. App sharing toolbar. So I, I, I'm so sorry. You will hear the screen reader for just a moment till I get the YouTube window. Inclusive ICT. Frankie the dinosaur has. Now I will stop the screen and uh, turn on the video. Speech mode off. Okay. You need a minute? Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Listen up, people. I know a thing or two about extinction. And let me tell you, and you'd kind of think this would be obvious, going extinct is a bad thing. And driving yourselves extinct? In 70 million years, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. At least we had an asteroid. What's your excuse? You're headed for a climate disaster, and yet every year governments spend hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. Imagine if we had spent hundreds of billions per year subsidizing giant meteors. That's what you're doing right now. Think of all the other things you could do with that money. Around the world, people are living in poverty. Don't you think helping them would make more sense than, I don't know, paying for the demise of your entire species? Let me be real for a second. You've got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big chance. So here's my wild idea. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes. Thank you. So now you have seen the video with no screen. Uh, the image is black. I'm going to turn on the screen and we were going you we are going to see the video again or at least part of it, the first part of it. Um, and then you can uh, share with us your experience. So speech mode beeps, speech mode talk. NVDA menu. Preferences sub settings. Speech dictionary settings. 
NVDA, speech 2 of 15, braille 3 of 15, vision 4, vision prop, highlight system, highlight navigator, highlight browse mode, screen curtain group, space. Not checked. Always show, play sound, OK button. Frankie the dinosaur. So now I removed the screen. I will now. Space. J. J. Zero minute, speech mode off. Can you make it into full screen or maximize? Sure. Um, unfortunately, not. The screen reader isn't letting me. Try Speech something. mode beeps. Speech mode. Se ne click autoplay. Subtitle settings. Mini play. Theater mode. Full screen. Loading page. Pane. I think this is full screen, but I mean loading complete. Number Don Chusy. Oh, is it another? Is it another? Clickable dialog. Banner land app bar tool profile one pro S search button. Clickable cr clickable clickable navigation landmark home tab shorts tab subscriptions like tab loading page pain 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 loading complete. Can you see now? Is it uh, is it working? It's not big, but I think we get the idea. It's Going it's back, pain, on full screen. pain, pain, pain. Clickable main landmark, click from you. Clickable, clickable skip navigation. Okay. YouTube Have a either, search landmark. You can see it like this, or or I can share it. With Speech options. mode off. Yes. It's, um... You okay? You need a minute? Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so you can you can just get the idea of having a, a video uh, with no image. So it's uh, that's why it is very very essential for anyone who is presenting any kind of visual content to uh, verbally describe uh, what is this being displayed on the screen. So if you would like to share uh, your experience between the uh, in the difference between showing the video with no uh, picture and showing the video with pictures, uh, please go ahead. Feel free to type in the chat or raise your hand and un unmute yourselves. I don't see any comments, Eva. <laughs> but for me, I had seen the video before. Oh, there is one comment from Heather. Let me read her comments off first. But it says we could hear the thumping and imagine it could be a big animal, but had no context of what the animal or who the audience could be for. Yes, yes, and you can hear people screaming on the way in the in the background, and you read don't really know why they are screaming, for what reason. And you can hear just some music and some sound effects. So the information is coming to you very, very defragmented. Um, yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah, no, and another comment, well, also from Heather saying it says, since it said it's extinction, uh, I imagine it was an extinct animal. And then a separate comment from Josephine saying, I didn't think that the first part was in the UN or in a conference from the sound only. It seemed like it was from an a world ending movie in the streets with people running everywhere. Yes, yes, exactly. So now we are going to let me first um, uh, turn the screen on and uh, stop sharing and restart sharing without the computer sound. Speech mode beeps. Speech mode talk. 952. PowerPoint slideshow, Microsoft Teams call, Zoom row two, column four. Microsoft Teams call, in clickable button, stop sharing, button hang up. Caps lock on, cap blank, clickable hang up button, stop sharing button. And one other comment came, um, creating an imagery, I think it is the best way forward because it makes you feel and know the exact way 
in which things are unfolding. I'm sorry, it's taking me a little time uh, to share my screen again. So if I, if I couldn't share, uh, Diego, can you share from your end and then we will watch the second video? Is yeah, it sure. okay? okay. Yeah. Do you want me to put the first video, the second video directly or? Yes, but, but uh, can you do it without with muting the sound, please? Yes, I can. Give me just one second. Sometimes the screen reader does that. Whenever I stop sharing, it freezes for some reason. So it should be on screen. Um, and just get it. Getting the ads first, but OK. No, it's going. It should okay. be shared. Um, can everybody see it without the sound? Or you can just let me know. Yes, we can see it with no sound. Okay. Yes, Great, see thank you. And there are no captions available, correct? There are captions. There are? Yeah, should I take them out? Um, yes, please. Me pause it because it's all going in captions and for some reason. Yeah, got it.
finished. Emma, let me know. We can't hear you. Oh, OK. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. OK, so uh, of course you have seen in, 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 in this video, I'm not sure what the images in this video uh, are, but I'm sure that uh, having a video with no sound um, makes you miss out on a, a lot of information that is, uh, that, is that must be present in the video. Um, I'm just mindful of the time. Um, I'm not sure that we we are going to uh, we can show the video again with with sound on, um, but uh, we will be uh, uh, leaving the the links uh, in the chat in case you would like to see the video in your own time uh, with the with the sound on. So as you can see, there are a number of accessibility barriers and features uh, that could be uh, available in MS MS uh, online or online meetings in general that would uh, prevent persons with disabilities from accessing uh, information. Um, and you can play around with the, with the options in, in the teams and the MS teams uh, by uh, clicking on the three dots uh, next to the participants names uh, or you know you can long press on any participants name and then you will have an option to spotlight this participant or uh, pin this participant. Um, uh, and you can also long press on the participant's name to turn off the spotlight for these participants. If you have uh, a, a person who is already spotlighted, you can choose add spotlighting uh, option. Uh, when you long press on the participants, you, you're wishing to stop uh, to stop light. Now we are going to move to um, the Zoom cloud meeting. Can, can we please Diego, go to the slide uh, of the Zoom cloud meeting? Uh, this is another pardon. No, it's there. OK, thank you. Uh, this is another online platform uh, that is widely used uh, by uh, persons, especially persons with disabilities, because it provides uh, shortcut keys and the screen of the um, uh, Zoom cloud meeting is uh, more uh, easy to use and more intuitive than MS Teams meeting. But unfortunately, because of some security breaches, breaches uh, we are uh, unable to use the Zoom cloud meetings and also the uh, Microsoft Teams meetings uh, recently provided a lot of shortcut keys and a lot of accessibility uh, fixes to some accessibility issues. But um, we are going to uh, in, in this in the coming slide, we're going to uh, talk about uh, the accessibility feature in the Zoom cloud meetings. So just as in the MS Teams meeting, the Zoom uh, cloud meeting provide uh, spotlighting, uh, pinning uh, features along with live captioning, automated live captioning or uh, manual live captioning as well using the same uh, technology, which is uh, using an API software or API client. Um, And uh, and it's very uh, it's, it's very essential to make sure that uh, the sign language interpreter, the camera is showing their face and their hands. There's nothing which is uh, uh, um, uh, which is like acting like an obstacle, which would uh, prevent users from seeing the person's hands when they are signing. To be sure that the camera view captures their hands, and um, and try to. Uh, 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 for, for the organizer should try to um, uh, use the tiles and the and the and the customizing options in the Zoom uh, video screen that would enable the uh, the camera view or the video view of the sign language interpreter to be fully captured and and very clear. Uh, it's, it's, it's essential to create uh, manually create uh, breakout rooms in order to uh, uh, ensure that the person that the sign language interpreter is present in the same room uh, just as the person who is uh, has the for hard of hearing who is the for hard of hearing and of course the same feature could be applied also to uh, Microsoft Teams meeting. Uh, it's essential to slow down uh, their pace for the presenters when they are speaking, so that would enable live uh, sign language interpreters and uh, professional captioners to caption and uh, and interpret in sign language. 
um, the, uh, it's very helpful to enable always show meeting controls when you are hosting a meeting so that uh, the meeting attendees and participants uh, would be able to change uh, uh, the meeting controls, uh, such as the backgrounds or hiding their video or pinning or spotlighting another person's video uh, so that it could be customizable for uh, users with their different needs. Uh, it's it's uh, essential to mute to enable mute participants upon entry. This is very helpful in uh, Zoom meetings. And it, it is essential as well to, to send a list of uh, Zoom uh, shortcut keys and key shortcut uh, keyboard shortcuts to uh, screen reader participants uh, or uh, participants who are screen reader users in advance uh, so that they would uh, be familiar with them. And the same concept, of course, of uh, verbally describing any visual, any visual content, it applies also to Zoom meetings. And uh, setting a, a definite uh, or, uh, or fixed uh, mechanism of uh, answering questions or sharing comments is always very, very helpful. Um, and um, it is very, uh, it is it advised not to use polls because they are not very accessible uh, in Zoom. And in the next slide, you can see uh, some uh, accessibility settings that are available in Zoom meetings um, um, with the screenshot showing that. Um, and you can always uh, click on the meeting information or meeting settings icon and display those settings and customize them according to the user's needs. Um, it also offered uh, voicemail transcriptions for participants who are deaf or hard of hearing, and this is very, very useful. And it focused, uh, it offers dark mode and uh, focus mode um, modes for uh, to be used uh, by users with different needs. And in the following slide, you can see a plugin that is used, uh, the Zoom uh, Cloud Meetings plugin that is used by uh, uh, for Microsoft Outlook uh, to set in calendars and sync calendars and send reminders and so on. Um, and this is it doesn't it is not very much related to accessibility, but it is uh, I thought it's very helpful uh, uh, thing to mention since you are thinking of organizing online meetings. If you want to use uh, the uh, Microsoft plugin, uh, Microsoft Outlook plugin for Zoom. So in the next uh, exercise, um, I, I try to, uh, 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 in your own time, try to um, schedule an, a new meeting, uh, via, whether it's uh, via Zoom or via MS Teams meeting, uh, and try to uh, work and play around with those options of uh, uh, using live captions, uh, automatic live captions, recording the meeting, blurring the background, uh, using together mood, um, all the options that we uh, discussed earlier. And uh, with this, I end up my uh, presentation, uh, the content that I prepared. And uh, uh, please feel free to ask any questions or share any comments uh, before handing uh, or giving the floor to our colleagues in Namibia. Well, there is one question um, from Jusain asking, is there a manual or step-by-step -step for those kind of instructions? For example, how to provide Zoom keyboard shortcuts to the users? Uh, yes, we are, we are sharing in the resources slide uh, some links of uh, shortcuts uh, that are available in MS Teams and in Zoom uh, that you can uh, visit the, these URLs and uh, copy those shortcut keys, keys into a Word document or send the URL to the attendees or participants. Uh, and there are also um, uh, links about the accessibility feature in both uh, platforms uh, for your information uh, and for your guidance if you want to go back to. Great. There doesn't seem to be any other questions. OK, so uh, I would hand over the floor to our colleague from Namibia. Uh, we're very uh, pleased to have you with us today. 
and uh, the floor is yours to hear uh, to speak to us about uh, Namibia uh, experience in inclusive ICT and ex inclusive online meetings. Over to you. Thank you very much, Heba. Welcome to all the colleagues. Good afternoon from Namibia. It's almost four o'clock, four o'clock p.m. This site in Ventuk, Namibia. Thank you for having me. I'm just going to take you through. Can everybody hear me? Am I loud enough? Yes, perfect. Yes, you are loud. Thank you. So I'm going to take you through the Namibian experience when it comes to disability inclusion. Uh, UNCT in Namibia recruited its first staff with a disability in 2020, which is not so long ago. And this was a very important step as it is important towards the journey to become more inclusive. You know, it's really important to have um, staff members with a disability. So currently, um, Namibia has two staff members with a disability. Can, can we please move to the next slide? Is currently Namibia has two staff members with disabilities and they are all persons with visual impairment. Our focus for the two staff members is to understand that all different disability, all, uh, all disabilities are different and therefore the needs are different as well. And uh, the focus is also on recruiting more staff members with different disabilities. Currently, the situation is in our in our conference rooms and the rooms that we use for big meetings. We have two screen readers, namely JAWS and NVDA. Uh, but the system through Common Services is busy, is in the process of purchasing more assistive devices such as braille displays, braille papers, braille printer, braille stapler, Tuxberry, pair scanner, and an open book software in order to accommodate our fellow staff members in online meetings. We also make sure that the meeting links are accessible for them. We give them enough time to join online meetings and to complete their work. We also transcribe our meetings with non-textual content such as images into text. If not possible, we read them. Uh, we read it out loud to colleagues with visual impairment. And we also use a disability accessibility checker to, for all documents with, we share. And we're also in the process of hiring a consultant who will carry out the following functions to ensure that our ICT is accessible for persons with disabilities. Next slide, please. So the consultant will uh, map accessibility features of locally developed web content. It, uh, the consultant will also map digital and ICT hardware, such as ac accessible meeting rooms, working stations, light switches, and will also create an ICT and digital and digital accessibility strategic plan to help address the current gaps. Next slide, please. So the current challenges. We have limited funds towards disability inclusion. Uh, our current ICT staff of common services are not sufficiently skilled on ICT accessibility. So this results in staff with disabilities not receiving proper ICT orientation when they begin the assignments because our current um, ICT staff in common services don't have the requisite skills. And we also don't have uh, staff with disabilities on a fixed term contract. Which will, if we have staff members with disability, it will encourage the UN to continually improve um, um, uh, disability inclusion or to have an, an inclusive environment. But currently none of our staff members with a disability are on a fixed term contract. And also we are limited in, st in, in terms of the, the local suppliers. We don't have local suppliers that have um, assistive devices. 
So these devices always have to be imported from outside the country. And uh, the, the Atlas and quantum system are not fully accessible for people with a visual with visual impairment. And people with visual impairment cannot use a computer mouse and also the arrows. So it's therefore not easy to execute tasks on the computer that are that are only completed using the mouse, for example. And then the raise hand function does not consistently work for screen readers. So our colleagues with visual impairment, for example, are not always able to provide their inputs during online meetings when required to raise their hands before having to say something. Can we please move on to the next slide? So we are suggesting the following solutions. There should be a booklet developed on ICT for UN staff with disabilities. And then every UN agency should also have a budget towards disability inclusion and ensure that it's it's completed. This budget is completely utilized every year. And then it's also important, we can't speak about disability inclusion if we don't hire people with disabilities on a fixed term basis. At least in all of its agencies of half or half of the agencies. So it's, it's not just enough to have uh, persons with a disability on a temporary basis, but it's important to have them on, on a fixed term contract as well. And this will include that um, disability inclusion is really is 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 led somehow by persons with disabilities themselves. Thank you. Over to you, Heba. Thank you very much for uh, for this very informative and comprehensive presentation, and it highlights uh, the main challenges that are faced by many UN cities in providing inclusive ICT services. Uh, for instance, having to procure equipment from outside the country because, unfortunately, assistive technology uh, in terms of hardware and software are very difficult to manufacture. Manufacturer, uh, so they are manufactured only in limited uh, locations. Uh, and also uh, finding the, the the ICT personnel that is uh, very informed about accessibility is also very very difficult. Um, so um, any any uh, other uh, colleagues would like to comment on the Namibian experience uh, if they if they have faced the the same challenges and uh, if they have found any kind of uh, solutions for those challenges. There was one question um, asking if the additional devices that were in the process of purchasing were a direct request from the colleagues with visual impairments or they assumed that they would need it. Can I answer? Yes, please. Yes, uh, the, the list of uh, assisted, assisted devices that are being procured right now um, actually, the, the whole disability inclusion for Namibia was led by our two staff members with, with disability. So yes, uh, these solutions or these suggestions came directly from them. And may I comment uh, another and another comment, please? Yes. Uh, also, there are some uh, some devices, uh, software and hardware uh, that are essential to to be procured in any workstation um, that is accessible. For instance, um, if we need to uh, procure um, a braille printer, for instance, and a computer, uh, we have to have the the software that translates um, the text from um, print to braille in order to communicate with the printer in order to be able to print uh, braille copies, for instance. So this this software is a must have. Uh, also, for instance, uh, it's a it's, um, we can set up a, a, like a model workstation with um, a, CC, a, a computer a screen reader uh, such as uh, JAWS or NVDA and a braille device and the braille device is very useful uh, if someone has uh, a hearing impairment and a visual impairment as well uh, and also if this person even if this person is only uh, visually impaired it is it is very essential to use a braille device uh, if this person is conducting a meeting an online meeting or uh, or is attending an online a meeting and, uh, and cannot use a screen reader so they can use the braille device 
and also using a screen magnification software uh, is uh, is essential also for for users with low vision and having a, a cctv magnifier machine which is a machine that used to magnify the printed materials is also an essential part of um, having an, an accessible workstation so there are a number of uh, uh, software and hardware equipment uh, that is generally procured if this person has a certain kind of, of impairment, like visual impairment, for instance. But of course, as our colleague uh, said, uh, each disability is different and each disability uh, requires or each impairment requires a different type of technology. So do, do we have a, any more uh, questions? Uh, sorry, Heba, can I come in? Sure. sure. I just wanted to say that I'm also joined by my two colleagues. One is Jungjie Zhang, and then Josephine Iyambo as well. So they are more than welcome to please uh, uh, contribute to this discussion as well regarding what Namibia is doing. And I'm... Jungjie and Josephine uh, and Christophine, sorry, if you have any more, in, if you have inputs, please feel free to join in as well. Thank you, Erolais. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Um, I think Erolais has uh, spoken of everything, every effort that we are making now just to be more inclusive in terms of uh, disability and uh, nothing to add. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, really, yes, please go ahead. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, we can just continue. I also just wanted to to second what Junji said. I think all has been um, has been covered. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, we really applaud and congratulate you on the ex in extensive efforts you and measures you've been you've been taking in order to make your place an inclusive, uh, digitally in, uh, accessible and inclusive work, workplace. We did have another hand raised, but it's no longer raised, so I'm assuming there isn't any question, but if there is any other question, uh, let us know. So, uh, so if if there is any any questions, uh, is it uh, do you, is it okay to conclude the presentation? Yes, I'll conclude. Yes. Okay. Yes. So please feel free to um, to uh, we will share with you the the presentation with the resources. And if you if 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 you could please if you could uh, Diego if you could please send the survey um, because you always remind me to say this. And thank, thank, I remember this time. Um, uh, you please feel free to uh, fill uh, our survey. We have uh, our Diego have prepared a, a survey form uh, to um, measure your, uh, uh, you know, to assess um, the trainings that we are offering and also to try to improve it as much as we can. And uh, so uh, it's very important to us. Your feedback is very important to us. So please kindly feel free to um, uh, provide us with uh, uh, feedback um, uh, using this form. So uh, thank you very much, everyone uh, who have attended this uh, webinar, and thank you very, very much. A big thanks and uh, goes to our colleagues from Namibia who kindly shared with us uh, their extensive efforts uh, in order to provide a more inclusive uh, ICT place, uh, working place. And uh, we will be rerunning re this webinar, and this will be the last webinar in our series. We'll be rerunning re it on Thursday. Um, uh, so feel free to forward uh, the registration link uh, to your uh, colleagues uh, who couldn't join in today to join in um, next uh, Thursday. Thank you very much and have a great uh, day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Heather. Thank you Thank very you much. Everyone. Thank bye you, bye. Heather and Luis, Diego and all the other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you.